Hello. Um, I'm Patrick Sullivan, and I'll be giving an int introduction to the Psych Genomics Consortium. So the PGC is currently well over a thousand scientists from over 50 countries. Um, we began in 2007. Our first meeting was uh, in 2008 at the New York World Congress meeting. And uh, we've been very fortunate to have funding from the NIMH and NIDA in the United States. And we're currently on our fourth PGC grant, the PG PGC4 grant. Um, however, we're deeply grateful for the many other organizations have, that have directly and indirectly funded PGC efforts. So the PGC currently in, in its current iteration has eight sites um, and it has 16 PIs. The, UN, the US sites are at the University of North Carolina where Cindy Bulick and I live, um, Harvard, Yale, UC San Diego, Mount Sinai, Wash U, St. Louis. The international sites are in Cardiff and Dublin. The PGC, the overarching group for the PGC is the coordinating committee. Um, it, it's comprised with the group leaders who we'll note in a moment, along with regional representatives um, and this is new for us in the last year, and we're deeply grateful to have elected representatives from East Asia, from Latin America, Africa, and we're working on getting South Asian representation as well. Um, the, in another new move, um, the PGC Coordinating Committee also now is an executive committee, uh, which is composed of myself, Catherine Lewis, Arpana Agrawal, and Ole Andresen. Um, with Naisha and Grace being project manager and RA in particular. I'll explain that in a sec. The traditional the 11 traditional disorder groups that we have are listed here from ADHD and Alzheimer's all the way through to schizophrenia and substance use disorders. Um, the cross-cutting groups we have are for cognitive variation, formal cross-disorder analysis. We have a new suicide group led by Neve Mullins, Anna Doherty, and Doug Rudifer, as well as a transcend trans ancestry analysis group and a dissemination and outreach committee. We're totally grateful to the analysis complex, which is the group of people that bring the genotype and phenotype data into the PGC, process it in an analytic ready way, as well as make these data available to others for secondary analyses. Um, they do a fantastic job. Their work is complex and interesting and really the subject of a, of a complete talk in its own right. The roles. So the coordinating committee effectively just deals with PGC-wide issues, communication between the groups, interconnection points, and rarely conflict resolution. The executive, executive committee um, members each have sort of an, an, an area where they lead large-scale initiatives for the PGC. So Catherine does essentially education and teaching, the worldwide lab, the programming for, the, for this con conference. She actually has done the PGC programming for three years in a row. Um, and has done a fantastic job with that. In addition, she's been spearheading the PGC video textbook. Arpana is leading the diversity efforts at the PGC, of which there are several, let me correct that, of which there are many. There's a lot of stuff happening right now. And Ole's done um, a lot of great work in interfacing the PGC with pharma and other consortia. And my domain, my, uh, my idea is for new projects, and I'll talk about one at the end of this talk. The working groups, though, the key issue is that they're self-governing. Um, they understand their science and the state of play in their field the best, and they run their, um, their operation. So the coordinating committee has a light touch and really educates issues that affect the PGC as a whole, whereas the working, group run, the working groups run their individual science. So the PGC4 grant, I'll just talk about um, AIMS 1 through 3 real fast. So AIM-1 is essentially our core business, to do yet more of the, the, the GWAS meta and mega analyses that we do for severe psychiatric disorders. And really one of the key things we need to do is increase ancestral diversity. Um, we wanna do more in the, across the genetic um, architecture spectrum by integrating common and rare variation. Um, this has to do with CNV and GWAS results, exome where we can get it, as well as to to, to the project that Aidan Corbin's been leading about doing whole genome sequencing in rare, dense pedigrees. In addition, um, I, I don't think any of us believe that the standard diagnoses we have are adequate. And so we we're doing a lot of work um, across traditional categories in order to actually understand the phenotypes that undercuts these disorders. In addition, we're doing a bunch of stuff on um, finding highly severe cases because that's something the PGC can do better than anybody else to get the real clinical um, cases that are not well represented in a lot of the large biobanks. 
And then um, finally, we do a bunch of stuff on novel uh, therapeutic and preventive opportunities as well as formalizing outreach. Um, I just wanted to highlight the diversity issue. And so this is our empirical data from the PGC looking at the numbers of people per country that are in the PGC on a log 10 scale. And as you can see, we have great coverage in many places, but um, the, the, the regions between the Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic, Tropic of Ca Capricorn are really under um, covered. And we really need to improve that. There's a lot of things happening. And that's another reason why we're grateful that we now have elected representatives from three of these four regions. So people ask me all the time, how do I get involved in the PGC? Straightforward. Um, generally, everybody has to agree to the memo of understanding, which essentially just um, indicates in an uh, honor basis that you will agree to follow the, the ethos and the principles upon which the PGC is founded. Initially, we used to require that people actually share individual phenotype and SNP data with us. That's been relaxed somewhat. It's possible for any individual, if they can partner with a PGC principal investigator, a cohort principal investigator, um, to actually propose a secondary analysis. Um, we have outreach efforts to low and middle income countries where we're trying to uh, uh, further their science by getting data. Um, it, the other thing we do often is matchmake. So if someone has a, a large sample, but don't have the funds for genotyping, we can often find someone who can help them with that. In addition, there's a postdoc crisis right now. Um, all of us have open positions. And if you're interested in being a PGC postdoc, let's talk. Um, it's certainly possible for people to get involved with a working group by volunteering. That is one of the more effective ways to do it. And in fact, I would argue that this conference is a great place to accomplish that end. Um, reach out to the group chairs, go to the group meetings, um, talk to the PIs of the groups and see whether there's any common ground that might be found. And then finally, I wanna talk about a new study. Um, this is my pandemic puppy. This is something I did um, in the midst of the pandemic because basically I got tired of waiting. It's been known for a long time that we need to get a very large study that's transdiagnostic um, going uh, in order to actually complete it. Um, and so we have a new study that was funded on September 1st. Um, uh, this, uh, the, the multiple PIs are myself, Alex Charney at Mount Sinai, and James Walters at Cardiff. The idea is that we're going to do common variant genotyping plus CNB calls plus whole exome sequencing on 130,000 cases. We need to do this within the next 2.5 years. Um, we already have rough commitments from over 100,000 cases. Cases here though are defined as schizophrenia, schizoaffective disorder, bipolar one, or severe major depression, which has an explicit definition. The idea is that we're gonna go, we're gonna do the same analyses across so that we can understand the similarities and differences between these obviously genetically related disorders. We will harmonize phenotypes on the way in so that we're able to do cross disorder analyses of substance use, of the, pre the presence of a manic episode, the presence of a depressive episode, the presence of suicide. Um, the pro, if someone were to participate in this is the assays would be free. The data would come back to you immediately for nearly unrestricted use. You got your data, you got a phenotype, go for it. Um, you'd be able to uh, uh, put forth secondary analyses on the full data set and see that through to publication. The con is that we are by necessity working with a for-profit who will pay most of the asset costs, which to us would be on the order of $60 million. We've done extensive due diligence. We've done a lot of ethical work. We've done a lot of care and looking at this and, and dotting the I's and crossing the T's. And in the end, we judge it worth it. You may or may not agree. Um, however, what it comes down to for me as a psychiatrist is we need better medicines. To get better medicines and to leverage the power of mo modern uh, drug discovery, we need knowledge of targets and far larger whole exome sequencing study are highly likely to deliver those targets. That's what we're doing. If you're interested in getting more information, contact psych.exome at gmail.com or contact me, James, or Alex directly. Um, James and Alex are at the conference. And then finally, this is the thanks slide. Um, these are 802 people from the PGC. It's amazing group. It's been fantastic to work with everyone. And thank you for your attention.